Hey everyone, in today's video, we are going to find out what colors you can choose to make your color palette more versatile. The idea for today's topic is actually from this empty half pen that has been in my palette for a few weeks. I've been thinking about what color I should add to this palette to make it more versatile. So why not make a video about it? What I mean by versatile is Using the colors that you have, you should be able to mix all other colors around the color wheel. So for example, here I have a color wheel. I have very clean yellow, very bright orange, very strong intense reds, violets, purples, blues, and greens. Using the colors that you have, um, you should be able to mix all of this. So which are the colors you should include in your palette? So that's what we are going to find out today. Color choice is quite subjective. This is not a science. Different people have different preferences and depending on the subject that you like to paint, you may choose to include more of a certain color. So for example, if you like to paint landscapes, if you like to paint trees, greenery, then in your palette, you may probably want to include more yellows, more blues, because with yellows and blues, you can mix different shades of greens. If you are living in a warm place, a dry place where the colors look a bit warmer, then you may choose to include more warmer colors. Today, I just want to talk about some of the colors that you can choose to make your palette more versatile so that it doesn't really matter what subject matter that you paint with the colors that you have in your palette, you can mix any color that you want. There are different schools of thought when it comes to choosing colors. So one is why not choose colors that are already in the color wheel? So why not just choose green? Why not just choose purple and put it in your color palette? Well, that may not be a good idea because if you were to choose green, for example, then you are limited to mixing shades of green because this is a secondary color. You cannot use green to mix other uh, primary colors. But let's say if you choose yellow and blue to put in your palette, now you have more, now your palette is more versatile because with yellow, you can choose to mix green. With yellow, you can choose to mix orange. And with blue, you can choose to mix green. With blue, you can choose to mix purple. But if you are just going to include green, then you are really limiting your color mixing potential. Another school of thought is to include warm and cool versions of primary colors in your palette. Here I have with me is a 12 color palette that I used a while back. So I have warm and cool versions of yellow, warm and cool versions of red, and warm and cool blues. Now, what I mean by warm and cool is um, it's a relative term. That means if you look at the color wheel, if you compare colors side by side, one color will be warmer compared to the other color. It's a relative term. If you are just looking at one single color, it's uh, neither warm or cool, it's just a color. But when you place them side by side, then you can uh, get the warm and cool comparison. Colors that are closer to red, they are warmer. Colors that are closer to blues, cooler. So it's a relative comparison. The reason for including warm and cool versions of primary colors is because Certain colors, they have certain characteristics and they play well better with certain other colors. So for example, let's say if I want to mix a vibrant orange. If we look at the color wheel, it suggests to us that it may probably be better to start out with a warm yellow and a warm red. So let's try and paint that vibrant orange. With new gumbosh, this is considered a warm yellow. It almost looks like orange on its own. Let's see what happens when we mix it with some on red. So this is new gamboge. This is mixed with on red. This is warmer compared to this. This is a bit more orange. And now let's mix an orange with a cool yellow and cool red and see what happens. For the cool yellow, I'm going to use lemon yellow. And for the cool red, I'm going to use magenta. Maybe magenta is a bit too cool. Let's try permanent alizari crimson with lemon yellow. Once again, we have lemon yellow. And now we have 
Permanent Eyes Are Crimson. I used too much of this. Let me add a bit more lemon yellow to it. Alright, let's look at what we have. New Gamboge with Queen Crydon Red. We get a much more vibrant orange compared to these two mixtures. This is Lemon Yellow, Queen of Crydon Magenta, Lemon Yellow, Ali Zarin Crimson. In theory, when you mix yellow with red, you should get an orange, but here you can see the type of yellow, the type of red that you use, it matters. This is obviously yellow, this is obviously red, but the resulting mixture is not orange. So if your palette only has a cool yellow and cool red, then it's not going to be able to mix a vibrant orange. So the palette is not that versatile. To make it more versatile, you should add a warm yellow and a warm red so that you can get that bright orange. And there are different warm yellows you can add. It can be New Gamboge, it can be Hansa Yellow Medium, Hansa Yellow Deep, it can be uh, Raw Sienna. There are different um, warm yellows to choose from. The same applies to mixing purples and greens. Let's try and mix a purple. Alright, to mix that purple, I'm going to use a red and a blue. I want to use transparent pyro orange. This is one of my favorite colors. This is very obviously red. It's a very strong red. So when we mix red and blue, we should get purple. So let's um, mix this with phthalo blue, which is also another one of my favorite colors. So this is what happens when we mix phthalo blue with transparent pyro orange, a red and a blue. This is how phthalo blue looks like in concentration form. And this is how it looks like when we mix the red with the blue. This red and blue obviously doesn't give us purple, so let's try something else. And now I want to use Permanent Ali Zari Crimson, the same color that I used earlier. And this time for the blue, I want to mix it with Ultramarine Blue. So let's see what happens. I do not like the purple from the Permanent Ali Zari Crimson and French Ultramarine, so I want to mix another purple. This time I'm using Queen of Crydon Rose. So this is still a red, but this is a much cooler red, almost pinkish in color. And let's see what happens when we add French Ultramarine to it. In theory, red and blue should give us purple, but as you can see, it's not that straightforward. The color temperature of the primary color matters a lot here. With a warm red and a cool blue, this is the type of purple we can get. When I swap to using a cool red and a warm blue, now I can see the purple is more obvious here compared to this mixture. This is definitely not a purple or violet or anything close. But when I switch to another red and blue, this time I switch to using Queen of Crydon Rose. You can see the resulting mixture, this area here. This purple is so much more vibrant and cleaner compared to this mixture. Let's say I only have a cool blue and a warm red in my color palette, then that will only limit me to this sort of purple, which is obviously what I do not want. So in order to have a more versatile palette, I need to add a warm blue in addition to the cool blue, and I need to add a cool red in addition to the warm red to my palette. If you find that there is too much information to absorb, to understand, let me break it down to you to the simplest way I can explain it. So in theory, with primary colors, you can use them to mix any secondary and tertiary colors that you want. But in actual practice, each primary color has its own limitation. There is no such thing as a perfect yellow or perfect blue, which is why out there in the market, there are so many different colors uh, to choose from, even for red, magenta, there are so many to choose from. Some artists don't even consider red as a primary color, they consider magenta as the primary, but that's another discussion topic. The thing is, 
there are so many different yellows, so many different blues because there is no perfect primary color. If you only have one set of primary colors, then you are going to be limited to the colors you can mix with that particular set. In order to have a more versatile palette, you just have to add more primary colors to your palette. So take for example the 12 colors that I have here. If I were to make this palette more versatile, I would add more primary colors. I could swap out a green because with greens you cannot mix other colors. So I may, I may swap out this. I may add another red to this palette. So I may swap out this and add another red. And then I would have three sets of primary colors. I have three yellows, three blues, and then three reds. Sometimes you may want to choose colors based on certain characteristics that they have or certain effects that you want. For example, if you want more textures in your paintings, then you may want to choose more granulating paints. So between these two colors, Thalo Blue and French Ultramarine, if you want more texture, then French Ultramarine might be a better choice because it is granulating. Earlier on, I mentioned that if you have a secondary color in your palette, you are going to limit your color mixing potential. For example, with green, you cannot use green to mix orange, purple, or uh, any other green. You cannot use this green to mix this green, for example. But I choose to include greens in my palette because um, these two greens are the greens that I use very often. So by including them, it actually helps me save a lot of time when it comes to mixing greens. So what secondary colors should you add to your palette? Personally for me, I would choose a secondary color that I can mix with existing colors that I have. So for example, with this particular palette, I have sap green here. I can mix sap green with Hansa yellow medium and French ultramarine. I can get a color that is very close to sap green. So when I use these three colors together, they will look harmonious, they will not look out of place. But if I choose to include phthalo green, for example, with Hansa yellow and French ultramarine, if I use these three colors side by side, they are going to look a bit weird. Phthalo green is going to look out of place. You can choose to include earth tones in your palette, although that would not make your palette more versatile because you can mix earth tones with primary colors. If you want to make your palette more versatile, add more primary colors. But I choose to include earth tones because there are some mixtures that I can mix more quickly with earth tones. They are also convenient colors like greens, like purples, like orange. For example, I like to mix greys with French ultramarine and burnt sienna. I can get greys by mixing primary colors, but it's so much faster for me to get those are greys with burnt sienna and French ultramarine. If I want to paint skin tones, I can get the skin tones that I like very quickly with yellow ochre or raw sienna, which is why I include them in my palette. I can mix skin tones with other primary colors, but it's just so much more convenient with earth tones. If you want to find out what colors you are lacking in your palette, maybe you can paint a color chart. I actually have a video that teaches uh, how to paint color chart. I'll put that link in the video description below. Or you can choose to paint a color wheel. Now with a color chart, you can tell straight away at a glance what colors you are missing or what colors you cannot mix with the existing colors that you have. So with this Kramer Pigments palette, for example, this has 14 colors. I have created a color chart for it. And straight away, I can tell that if I want yellows, orange, reds, uh, those vibrant colors, I have them here. If I want bright greens, dirty greens. If I want turquoise light colors or earth tones, I have them. The limitation of this particular palette is, seems to be around this area. If I want bright, purples, vibrant purples. I don't think I can get it with the colors that I have in this palette. So if I want colors like this, um, these purples here, they are a bit dull compared to the purples I have here. So in order to make this palette more versatile, I would probably need to add this color or this color. I actually have a warm blue here, which is 
cobalt blue deep but um, maybe French ultramarine might be a better choice but um, you do need to test out the color mixtures in order to get the colors that you want so the key takeaway point of this video is if you want to create a versatile palette just add more primary colors to your palette so one last example I have here this is the palette that I'm currently using I have just swapped out one color here that's why there is an empty half pan I'm thinking of some color I should add to this palette I already have three yellows I have three blues I only have two reds so it is very likely for me to add a red here to make this palette more versatile and it's not easy for me to choose which reds to include because there are so many to choose from currently I'm thinking of either transparent pyro orange quinacridone rose or quinacridone lilac or maybe I might swap out the sap green and this brown color of tone and include all these three reds in who knows I do not have any color recommendations because the colors that I like may not be the colors that you like anyway I'm going to provide some links to articles that I think are quite useful when it comes to choosing colors you can check out those links in the video description below and that's all for my video today if you have any questions let me know in the comment section below Thank you for watching. I hope this video is helpful. See you in the next one. Bye.